Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I bring you today watercolor stacker slider cards from Art Impressions. The stackers are stamps that they have, and the slider is the die you'll see at the end. I've swatched out my Daniel Smith brown colors, my animal colors, because I had some animal paintings I wanted to do, and I wanted to have some ready-made swatches of the browns and yellows and those kinds of colors that I own. There's way more in their line. If you want a downloadable of this or something to pin, you can go grab that from my website. It's over on the blog today. Link is in the description. Now I am going to be painting these guys on some Arches watercolor cardstock. This is their rough, so it's got a good texture to it. And I'm painting with Tiger's Eye right now. The Tiger's Eye is a very light color. It's tough to get it to be a very beefy color and it's a little easier to build it up in layers so I've dabbed off some so that I get a very light color and then I'm going back in with a little more pigment on the brush a little less water and then I can keep layering that and if you wait until after it dries then you'll get very hard edges with your brush if you do it while it's wet then you get very soft areas so it depends on what kind of look you want and do you want details of fur or do you just want a wash of color? Some dogs you can actually see all that fur on and some you, you don't. So it's interesting on something like this to have this many dogs to practice a bunch of different animal textures all at one time on one stamp. This little guy is one of the happiest looking dogs in this stamp. He's so cute, all uh, tongue hanging out and everything. I'm gonna paint him in with yellow ochre and dab it off and then add more color to it. That's a, a great way to get more color out of the few colors you may purchase. Even if you only have a couple, you can get more color out of them by using less and more water. And you'll see that through this entire piece that I'm, <clears throat> I'm painting, excuse me, that I can dab off color and then add in detail again. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't have many colors, but you have a palette on which you've mixed oranges and purples at various times and you just want to use up all that color, mix all that color together and I guarantee you're going to get a brown because that's what happens when you mix all the colors together. So if you have just a quick animal that you need to color in on a stamp, you probably already have brown on your palette without knowing it and you can use up all that paint and clean off that palette for your next project. And with this little guy, I'm dropping in a little bit of Lunar Earth, which is a reddish color to add a little bit of depth onto some of the shadow areas. And on a stamp like this, don't worry about the light direction because there's so much detail going on and so much fun in all these dogs. No one's gonna care about being real careful with your light sources. Just give them some sort of difference in color and you'll be good to go. This is transparent brown oxide, which is a really interesting color. It does have some granulation to it that I find really interesting. And with this dog, I was trying to decide whether I was going to paint some of his face with the brown color or did I want it to be a lighter color. If I were to make his whole face that color, he might look like a big pile of brown at the bottom. So I wanted some differentiation between something in him so he didn't look like a big old, big old pile of brown. So I'm using some very watered down paint just to add a little bit of shading to him add a little extra water and then dab off some color. So he has barely any color on his face, but he has some there, it's not completely white. And then I can go back in with more of the same color, more pigment, less water on the brush to add more detail and more richness to the color. Next up, some buff titanium on this little pup. And I would love to know what's going on off screen on all of these stamps in the stacker line that Art Impressions has, there's animals looking all different directions, which is what animals do. I love the reality of that. Their people stamps are very realistic in the way that they appear and they do the same thing with the dogs, which I think is hilarious. So next up is this Burnt Umber dog. And if you look at the Burnt Umber swatch, that's a very dark color, but I'm using it with a lot of water which gives me a very light color in the end from this. And I'm able to then go do my shading with another color. So I went in with some sepia, which is a much duller color to add some shading to it. It just adds a little difference 
then I can, you know, make another dog the same burnt umber color and use it more intensely with a lot more uh, pigment in it and get two different browns out of the same tube. Now this dog, Quinacridone Gold, is a good color for Goldens. I used to have a Golden who would totally do this. She'd be looking the other way when you had the camera pointing at her. She'd be just all off doing a squirrel. <laughs> Did I hear something over there? <laughs> now here's that same burnt umber color that we used just a minute ago on two dogs above it. And I'm using it with much more of the pigment in it, like very heavy pigment. And it's an interesting, thing to practice what do each of your colors look like to, based on how much pigment you're using. How dark can you get them? How light can you get them? And it would almost be fun to try to paint this entire picture with all these different dogs using one tube of paint and see how many different colors you can get out of one tube. And I think that would be something that I might try sometime just to see as, as an experiment but I can add lots of detail and shading as I add more of the richer color of that burnt umber, just layers of it as the painting moves on. And the, the wetter it is, the softer the blends, the drier it is, the more you're able to do specific fur textures. The little pup up here is gonna be in the raw umber and I'm just gonna not even put any shading in him. I'm just gonna paint him because He's totally the, look at me, look at me, I made it to the top kind of dog. And the way that the paint went on looked like it was going to dry back beautifully as watercolor and I didn't really need to add anything else to it. This is raw umber that I'm using on this dog, but look over on the left at the actual color of the raw umber. I'm using a lot of water with it. And it almost looks like buff titanium because it's so light. So don't, don't sell yourself short by thinking that your paint only has one use. You can use it in a lot of different ways. And then this Gotite, Gertite, I, I'm not sure how you even say that, Gotite, um, for this little doggy up here on the top. He's just so adorable, he looks a little bit surprised. Now the die, the slider die, the way that it works, it has one opening and you can use it in a bunch of different ways and I'll show you a couple different ways to do it. On this one, I wanted to have the sentiment portion with the hole in it be stable and not stick to the, the die itself. And then the slider portion is gonna be the animals. So I put my adhesive on the top of that panel so that I'm gluing it basically to the inside of the die. And then I'm gonna put the adhesive, this is the uh, Be Creative tape, I'm using the eighth inch one, and then adhere it to the card base and just using all the little flaps. That's creating a little pocket in which I can slide my picture. So these little turtles slide right in there and I'll show you in a minute how you get it back out of there. Another way to use the die is to put the adhesive instead on the back side. And if you put it on the back side, then you can glue that to the, the flaps. I'm not sure how to explain this better. Maybe you'll, you'll get it when, when you see it actually in action but I put it inside here and then the flaps are what's gonna glue on top of those because then I can take the piece that moves and slide it in on top of the cats. But for the, in the meantime, now I'm just gonna glue all this down onto there so the cats are actually stable. They're not moving this time. Whereas on the last one, the turtles were the portion that moved. And then I need to add lots of adhesive on the back. I'm using wider Be Creative tape because when it's an interactive thing, I like to really use strong, strong adhesive in case somebody starts beating up the card as they try to play with it. And this piece I've added to the, uh, the card and I've cut out mountains at the top since there's a mountain of fun. So I thought it would be fun to add a mountain shape at the top. And I actually did do some inking on that so that I would get a little different color and I'm letting one of the kitties peek out at the top but you can see how nice that fits in there with the piece that moves being the sentiment, not the cats this time. And you'll see all of these again at the end, but this is the one that we're gonna use for the dogs that we just colored. So I've stamped my sentiment onto the card base and I'm lining up the die and gluing it down on here. And I'm gonna 
stick it down so that the opening is at the top this time. So then I can put the dogs in and pull them out, releasing the sentiment below. And I think with the, a nice strong ribbon at the top, it really indicates to the user that they're supposed to pull that out. I'm using some stamps from Avery L, the Dog On Awesome set, to add some footprints to the card because I got fingerprints on it and had to cover them up. And there you go. So that's how the finished card functions to reveal the sentiment inside. Happy tales to you. Now the other ones that are in the collection of stackers for the stamps. I made a card with each one. This one I cut an arc just so that I could have one of the little chickies show. Sending you piles of smiles. And this is the one that you saw earlier. I just added some ribbon embellishment to it, but you can see all the turtles that come through and I have a little piece of twine tied at the bottom. This one, I cut it so that one of the elephants peeks out and the other elephants are only revealed as you lift the sentiment. And on this one, the one that you saw earlier, I added some ribbon embellishments and then you can just slide it down so that you can see all the kitties inside. Aren't they fun? What fun ideas Art Impressions comes up with us for us, for our cards. I just love the way their brains work over there. So on the left is the Daniel Smith dot card video that I did. If you're interested in trying out some paints but you don't know what ones you can try, that's a great way to test them out. In the center is another interactive card from Art Impressions and on the right hand side, another interactive watercolored card. And if you'd like to hit that subscribe button, you're welcome to do that and get three videos a week from me delivered to your inbox. And I will see you guys later. Have a great day.